In the perfect world of calm, rational exploit discussions, we could all just sit down and everyone could make their ideas known, taking into consideration each and every point of view. But who are we kidding? This is the age of lobbing in hot takes, hurling insults, and a whole lot of other just juvenile and fucked up stuff. I'm not going in on a rant of any kind, but after listening back to my last Division 2 upload, I wasn't able to clearly get my thoughts across. And in a completely different angle, we've got some news from Ubisoft that might help out with issues within this game. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Welcome back to the channel, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and as always, I appreciate you sticking around and supporting me and my content. If you haven't yet hit subscribe, please do so. And while you're at it, make sure to ring the bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are always appreciated, and with that out of the way, let's go. In a Verge article posted yesterday, Ubisoft has released some numbers when it comes to their Rainbow Six Siege spoof detection system, Mousetrap. Now, as always, I will leave a link to this one in the video description, but the headline is encouraging. Ubisoft sees major reduction in Rainbow Six Siege cheaters thanks to Zim detection. Now, Ubisoft claims a more than 70% reduction in the amount of mouse and keyboard users found on consoles and a 78% reduction in the total spoofers in RS6. Most gamers, me included, were skeptical about this system and how it would ultimately succeed. We all know it's an arms race out there. Detection software is introduced, the spoof systems and cheap manufacturers adjust, and it just becomes this constant back and forth. Even Ubisoft claimed they were expecting a reduction between 30 to 50%, so the results exceeded even their expectations, and it targets devices like Zim, Cronus Zen, and others. Now, what is interesting about Mousetrap is how it works, as it doesn't immediately detect an instant ban players. Instead, it gradually applies more and more latency to disrupt detected players' aim and movement. The cure to remove the latency is then to plug in a controller and play the game as intended, where it will then gradually remove the latency and restore the detected player's game back to normal. Now, it's not perfect. There have been false positives and an exploit that was found whereby players could in fact use mouse and keyboard but drop from RS6 rounds at very specific times, thereby skirting mousetrap detection. Ubisoft claims that exploit was indeed patched in late June. Along these same lines, Epic Games started issuing permabans to players found using Cronus Zen and Cronus Max last year, and Bungie updated the TOS for Destiny to include punishments for players using these tools to gain an advantage. Ubisoft also states that after being penalized by Mousetrap, 43% of players have reverted to using a controller and have not been flagged as cheaters again. In tandem with Mousetrap, a mysterious PC-only system simply called QB was apparently dropped into the game in November 2022, which is reported to change the RS6 executable multiple times a day, causing compatibility errors with PC cheap programs and forcing cheap makers to constantly spend money to update their codes. Like I said, this system is less than perfect, and there certainly could be some artificial bloat in those percentages boasted by Yubi, but if true, this type of system could, in theory, be used within the division. EAC, or Easy Anti-Cheat, has shown its inability to detect cheaters, even those that are blatantly abusing the in-game systems, like infinite damage, infinite range, and ESP. There could also be some sort of application with Mousetrap, again in theory, to detect the XP issues contained within the game. Too much XP or out of certain parameters, and maybe Mousetrap could be configured to detect that and disable XP gains for a certain time, or at least throttle them back severely. I mean, I honestly don't know what it could do, but the concept is to handle this type of system automatically, without all the public drama we've uh, again seen these past few weeks. And speaking of those bans, the rollbacks, all that heated rhetoric flying around on social media, I wanted to first begin this with an apology. 
as my last Division 2 video was not exactly on point. I wasn't really able to convey my thoughts when it comes to cheaters, exploits, you know, things like that. And I saw some people commenting that they thought I was in total support of players that use these issues found in game and that those players should go unpunished. And that is the exact opposite of how I truly feel. So here we go with round two and hopefully this one makes more sense. First off, if you're a player that uses one of these systems, this time it was the descent joining group, leaving group mechanic to boost your shade rank to insane levels, then you do so knowing full well what could potentially happen to your account. The same goes for that whole Fei Lao Kim launcher thing that was all the craze back in March. I remember that the dev team sent out a message. They were monitoring the farm, and if you continue to use it past that warning, they were gonna take action. I don't remember exactly, but I think there was an account rollback in tandem with that once it was all concluded as well, although I could be wrong here. Maybe someone could clarify that for me in the comment section. Along these same lines, I've also weighed in several times that I personally do not believe in banning players for using a mechanic found in game. I had responses on that last video that you know, I should know better. It's listed out as an offense in the UBTOS, but still, it's my opinion that it's not necessary and they're too severe. Once again, my thoughts, my opinions, and you may not agree with them, but hopefully we can still keep an open mind and discuss it rationally, which I always welcome. I also made a statement that was something along the lines of players are players, they are human, and will of course gravitate towards any method that allows them to farm as quickly and efficiently as possible. Which again, you may not agree with, but deep down, you know that fact to be true. So when it comes down to these strongly worded tweets from the dev team announcing all these mass bans, I just don't agree with that. Especially since the mechanics are found within the game code itself. Now, if these banned players had used external software, cheats and hacks, I mean, something found outside of the game, then absolutely flatten them into a pancake and make damn sure they're never able to log another minute in the Division universe. And the reason I take this stance and this side in this argument is that there's blame to place on the game itself. And with that, we also need to mention the development team. Time and time again, we've seen them show the ability to instantly deploy some sort of patch or fix to remove items, fix items, adjust items, especially when the item or activity is seen as an outlier. And if the fix is not readily available, if it can't be deployed instantly to remove whatever is allowing players to unnaturally boost their ranks, then it needs to be taken offline immediately. In this case, with this latest band wave, we're all talking about Descent. The issue was that players could join other players mid-round and gain their XP, and we know that the dev team knew about this issue fairly early on. They also claimed to have the systems in place to detect these mechanics and when players are found to be boosting XP at substantial rates. So if that's true, the very second those results started coming in with spikes in XP, Descent should have been taken offline with a server-side fix, or if that wasn't possible, maybe reduce it just down to a single-player experience until the multiplayer could be properly sorted out. But banning players for a known issue that was allowed to stay live in the game for that long? I'm not for that. Which brings me to my next point of rollbacks, and those I can get behind. If a player has gone crazy with boosting and now has some sort of insane level of shade rank and expertise, then yeah, go ahead and roll them back to a point where it all began. To me, seeing all that progress wiped away and still being allowed to log back in would have been an even bigger punishment and deterrent against cheating the next time versus, hey, we caught you, here's a couple of weeks vacation or a permaban. I mean, I see it like this. Are you trying to teach a lesson? Are you trying to create an environment built on fair play? Then do just that by removing the ill-gotten gains and place the player right back into the arena so they can stew in their own mistakes and learn from them. It comes down to teaching versus beating, and I'm always going to choose teaching. And finally, it's time that we have a serious and legitimate discussion on limiting XP gains in the PvP arena. It's not going to be a popular discussion, but it's time. 
If you take away the ability to grief other players with these seriously boosted stats, much of the desire to risk the potential gains versus a ban will quickly take away any idea of using this method to get these gains for PvP. And also, just to be clear on this facet, any player that boosts and then goes into PvP with these insane stats deserves not to play this game. Just period, full stop, you're done. Now, as a former competitive PvPer, when I see this junk kind of find and filter its way into PvP, causing other players to be at a serious disadvantage, I just instantly see red. On a side note, I constantly use the mission matchmaker, and I can't remember seeing anyone ever join into my party with like 100k shade rank or higher. I'm not saying it doesn't exist out there, I'm just saying that I've never personally seen that in PvE. So these boosted stats and accounts, at least from my experience, seems to be limited to being used in just PvP. So then we just need to cap the shade ranks and expertise levels to a set amount and let players adjust to that. Maybe that will help widen the skill gap back closer to what we initially had in Div 1 PvP, and who knows, players might actually start coming back to that side of the game, knowing that it was now an even playing field. But that's just my opinion on it all, and as always, I welcome your feedback in the comments section below. Make sure to hit that sub button and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Also, likes, comments, and shares are greatly appreciated. You can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over in my open community Discord server, links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Shout out to the now nearly 125,000 of you that have stuck around, taken the leap, and hit subscribe. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.